Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions and in today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're gonna be taking a look at eight tips to better CAD drawings in general. Uh, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this one. We're gonna to touch on a bunch of different stuff and we're gonna really pack this episode full of useful tips. Uh, let's jump right in. <laughs> All right, so getting started, this video is based on a blog post and tweet I wrote about last year, uh, highlighting eight simple tips to better CAD drawings. So we're going to touch on each of these, and then I'm going to put some links down below for you to learn or research a bit more on any of them that interest you. But I think if you can incorporate some of these into your daily drafting, your drawings are going to be cleaner, better organized, and easier to work with in general. All right, so. Tip number one is start all of your drawings with a template. Templates provide the ability to automatically bring in and start with, say, layout setup, your standard layers, any block to use often, uh, as well as any text or dimension styles that you like to use. This is also going to keep all of your drawings consistent by setting up a template. Uh, at the start. Every drawing afterwards is going to have that same base uh, to go off of, automatically creating kind of a standardized feel and look to your drawings. Once you have a template set up, it's as easy as clicking up here, choosing new drawing, and choosing a template. In my case, one of the CAD intention templates that you can pick up on the website. That's already preloaded with a handful of title blocks as well as viewport set up and everything set to scale. This is going to save you a ton of time in the long run and everybody should be using their own customized drawing template or their company's template in general. All right, so on to number two, and that is draw everything at one to one. Uh, you'd be surprised how many drawings I still come across where people have drawn at a random not to scale or a scaled factor within model space. Uh, that's unnecessary, uh, especially with layouts and viewports in all of the most recent version, versions of AutoCAD. Drawing at one to one in model space is going to eliminate any issues or confusion later on. It's also going to allow you to set your scale to any scale using a viewport later on down the road, saving you time as well as just making it easier to have those multiple views set up later on. It's also going to add a bit of insurance if you were to ever have to send out your drawings or provide them to a client at the end of the job. There's no confusion because you've drawn everything at the correct scale, one to one or real world units within model space. All right, moving on to tip number three, uh, and that is use layers and in particular use a common or typical layer naming convention. This is going to vary greatly depending on the uh, discipline you're in as well as the country and location since everywhere has a different set of standards. Uh, one that I particularly like is the NCS uh, naming convention or AIA as well. Uh, and these are going to have a variety of designators description describing what's on the layer, making it super easy and clear to place objects on layers as well as to find objects that are on these layers. A designator like C would mean civil, Anno would mean annotation, and then tables and say a pattern or a hatch. Uh, you could also see down here that they have C for civil and then say property and then name lots. So that would be property and lot lines. This is just an example. There are many, but as I mentioned before, I'll put links to each of these down below in the description. If you'd like to check out the NCS or AIA naming conventions, I'll put those down there as well. Next up is tip number four. And for tip number four, it's simply create a block anytime you have a set or group of objects that you find yourself recreating or using a similar version in multiple drawings. You can see in my example drawing here, we've got a handful of blocks, including an overhead light and this dynamic light switch here that gives you a drop down for a variety of options. Making a block is simple. Again, I'm gonna post that link down below to a video I've made on how to create blocks. But in general, you're gonna type in block to bring up your dialog box. You need to give it a name. We're gonna call this one toilet example. You're gonna choose a base point, which is where it's gonna be inserted from. You can pick the point here and choose somewhere where you'd like to insert it. 
I'm going to choose the back of the toilet since that's likely going to be placed up against a wall. Next, you just need to select the objects you'd like to be a part of your block. You can see I have 23. I'm going to make sure that I convert it to a block here so that it's already one in my drawing. And I'm just going to hit OK for now, leaving the rest of the defaults. It's going to say that I've already got a toilet block in here. I'm just going to redefine it and create a new one. Now you can see I have a block. This is going to allow me to easily uh, insert and move this block around or move it from one drawing to another. Blocks will save you a ton of time as well. Keep everything consistent throughout your drawings. I highly recommend creating them for everything you use often. All right, so tip number five is along the same lines of the one-to-one -one, uh, or drawing to real scale, and that is using annotative text and dimensions. A lot of people are still hesitant to jump into these, but they are a huge time saver, especially when you're using viewports and multiple views. They're going to allow you to change the scale of a viewport and not have to modify or change the text size for any of your labels, annotation, and dimensions. Everything's going to scale to a paper height that you've set, regardless of how zoomed in or out your scale may be. It's also going to allow you to set using that scale which text and labels appear on each viewport. Having the ones that are set to a scale show up and ones that do not have that scale set disappear. So it's a great way to keep your viewports decluttered by only adding scales to specific text and labels that you would like to show up. And it's going to help you save time if you ever need to change the scale of any of your viewports, all of your text is going to be automatically updated as well. Uh, I've got an entire course on annotative text. We also deep dive into it in my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course, which I'll have a link for up above and down below as well. I highly recommend that one. It's brand new and it goes deep into a lot of these uh, workflows that we talk about today. All right, we're already on to tip number six. Tip number six is dimensioning based, and that is do not dimension excessively. Dimension what's required so that your object, your floor plan, your site plan, uh, whatever can be built, but don't dimension to the point where you've got redundant dimensions, overlapping dimensions, confusing dimensions. It's very easy to uh, have too many dimensions in an area where it becomes confusing and it also opens up more opportunities for there to be an error. Whether one of the dimensions is slightly off or moved, uh, it just introduces too much risk and it's unnecessary. Dimension where you need to and always have enough on a drawing for it to be buildable and usable. Uh, it's also a good idea to always have a scale on your drawing or a scale bar so that if anything is needed to be pulled in terms of a dimension, it can be. Uh, but yeah, including too many dimensions or redundant double dimensions can be confusing and lead to a lot of issues. So always look at your drawing and see what's actually necessary and what's kind of excessive. All right, so tip number seven is use XREFs as often as you can. Uh, not only do they help keep your drawing kind of more organized and clean, but they also help with collaboration and working in a team, setting, say, a base plan or a site uh, layout floor plan as an XREF that is then referenced into a drawing where you overlay in this example, say a lighting plan or for civil works, maybe having a city's property in an XREF file that you can reference into multiple projects to use the lot lines and property lines from uh, is going to save you time in the long run. It's also going to allow other people to reference these drawings in that may be working on a different portion of the project but you're all still using these exact same base plans or base data, uh, reducing any chance of outdated or old uh, base data in other drawings and keeping things quick when updating. If you need to update the base plan, those are gonna be automatically uh, sent and updated in every drawing when they're opened or when the references are reloaded. Similar to the annotative text and dimensions, I also have a course about XREFs uh, I'll have that linked below and we also touch base on that in the workflows and fundamentals course which again I highly recommend. Alright so we're finally at tip number eight and that is the final tip of this video and that's to purge and audit your drawings when you're finished. 
Uh, when you're done working on a drawing and it's complete, you're ready to sign out. It's good practice when you're done or finishing up a drawing to do a quick purge and audit to make sure you clean it of anything that's unused, unnecessary, or duplicated within the drawing. This is gonna allow you to uh, not only just shrink the file size and keep everything clean and clutter free, it's also gonna prevent you from sending out things that maybe you didn't want to, you have removed, but you actually haven't deleted from the drawing, whether that's proprietary blocks or logos or your title blocks. Uh, anything that you may not want to send, you can purge out of your drawing. Using the purge command here is going to show you what's purgeable by hitting these plus signs within your drawing. These are objects, styles, layers, anything that is unused in your drawing and now no longer necessary since you're finished and unlikely to use them. You can always bring these back in from say your template, but it's a good idea to purge to keep things clean, uh, especially before sending out a set of drawings using the purge all here and choosing purge all items is gonna clean everything from my drawing, eliminating any unnecessary or unused layers, blocks, styles, etc., allowing you to comfortably send out a file as well as just keep things tidy. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I tried to pack a lot of stuff in there. If you've got any questions in particular, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. And thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here to make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.